everyone welcome to the channel we are the lion gaming crew and in this diablo 3 build guide we're going to be taking a look at the legacy of dreams for the barbarian available both in hardcore and softcore so no matter which mode you play on on ps4 and ps5 consoles we have got you covered now if you're looking for any of the gear shown in this video all you need to do is hit that link in the description, sign up for Discord if you're not already a member. It's absolutely free to join, and everything on there is being given away for absolutely free. So a big special shout out to each and every single one of my subscribers, and each and every single member of the Discord community. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on into this build guide. So for our main weapon, we are picking up Remorseless, man. This is actually a pretty good weapon right here. It's above 2 million damage. It's affixed for regular damage, percent damage, poison damage, which is going to be a constant theme on all main weapons for all builds in the future. And I'm updating all of the older builds to affix that poison damage on there so we can take advantage of the Season 25 Soul Shard on the amulet. But more on that later. So you're going to get 8,000 experience per kill because of the Gem of Ease. It has the Season 25 Soul Shard for the Death Blow animation, which is very nice. That's always good to see. And while both Wrath of the Berserker and Cloak of the Ancients are active, Hammer of the Ancients deals 250% increased damage. Now that is just really, really good because we're going to be utilizing Hammer of the Ancients as our main damage dealing attack so very good to see that on that weapon reduces cooldown of all skills by 46.8 percent resource cost reduction is at 27.1 percent this is a level one primal ancient legendary mighty weapon moving on to the gloves we're picking up these stone gauntlets these have been fully updated now showing the max armor score which is 2277 or 2277 depending on how you read it you know i read numbers like just binary 277 but enough of that 6000 strength 234 resist all elements is always good to see 220 percent critical hit damage 14 percent critical hit chance you're getting life per hit you're getting a 20 percent chance to immobilize on hit reduces the damage of enemies hit by 25 percent for five seconds and this also has the perk getting hit increases your armor by 50 percent but this is your movement speed by 15 percent and the attack speed by 20 percent this effect stacks up to five times. You don't really have to worry too much about that because you're going to be killing everything before they have a chance to hit you. So good to go, you know? Yeah, really good to go. Cooldown and resource cost reduction both at a flat 10% and 15% damage to enemies. Level 1 Prime Ancient Legendary Gloves. Moving on to the shoulders. We're picking up Fury of the Ancients. Pretty much the same deal as the gloves. It's, it's stacking strength. It's got some life per hit. As, we're almost, uh, yeah, we're above 7,000 strength with the augment counted as towards that total, so pretty good on a single piece of gear getting 7,000 strength. You can never complain, right? A Call of the Ancients gains the effect of the Ancients Fury Rune, and your Ancients attack 100% faster. Again, the bonuses are the same as the gloves, both 10% for skill and resource cost, and 15% damage to elite enemies. Level 1, Primal Ancient Legend. Moving on to the chest piece now. We're picking up the Cinder Coat because this is probably the best. We're not going to be utilizing it for its bonus, but it's just a good chest piece. You know what I mean? Like, you can use fire skills if you want. It's really up to you. You know, you play how you want. I'm not going to tell you a good way to play. Oh, well, I'm going to try to advise you, but I'm not going to tell you how you should play a build. So, yeah, it reduces the resource cost of fire skills by 30%, but, you know, resource cost reduction, we don't really have to worry about that, do we? 7,500 total strength, counting the augment. Uh, you get some life per hit, critical hit chance, critical hit damage, percent life, always good to see. And the bonuses are exactly the same as the shoulders and the gloves. So moving on to the helm. We're picking up Leoric's Leoric's Crown. Now this is good because it gives us a total life bonus of 76% life, which is just so good because percent life is just great. Vitality and life are two stats that I'm really not like hitting on the head on my on my builds so i'm trying to make them better so we're getting life after each kill life from health potions and globes and you get all this other stuff it's infused with that red soul shard you know so that's just good man i love that soul shard so much and you're going to cast a devastating ring of fire after killing 100 enemies 
periodically struggle for control, unleashing a ring of fire that inflicts 20,000% weapon damage to enemies it passes through, and increases the effect of any gem socketed into your helm by 100%, but that does not apply to legendary gems. Cooldown of all skills, 19%, resource cost reduction, flat, 10%, and 30% damage to elite enemies. Moving on to the amulet. This is the PvP amulet right here, buffing all main stats, but we're stacking damage and percent damage. I mean, I look at that percent damage, 1,400%, oh, wee! As a, oh, yeah, and then you're also getting 600% damage to all barb skills, which is, you know, it's, it's good, man, it's good. It ignores durability loss. Killing an elite pack increases move speed by 30% for 7 seconds. And you get all this other cool stuff shown on screen, man. We got Season 25 Soul Shards on there. Yes, we do. We got them all on there, man. All the good ones, I should say. All, I mean, all the ones that I think are good. And it also has the perk from a weapon, I believe. The damage of Hammer of the Ancients is increased by 800%. And it returns 25 fear, Fury if it hits 3 or fewer enemies. And you also get the Rampage passive. Pretty good for an amulet, man. Pretty good. I'm not, yeah, I'm not complaining at all. 52.1% on the cooldown of all skills. 46.8 for the resource cost reduction. 75% damage to all the enemies. And finally, that 25% movement speed capped bonus, man. Level 1 rare amulet. Moving on to the bracers. I always, I always misname these, so I'm so glad that with the Legacy of Dreams, I can tell you exactly what it is, because I know I... I know I'm messing up, guys. I know. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's uh, Bracers of the First Men. Again, stacking percent damage, strength, resist all elements, a little bit of life per hit, and Hammer of the Ancients attacks 50% faster and deals 500% increased damage. No, we did it. Oh, we... yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can tell where we're going with this build. It's going to be Hammer of the Ancients all the way. Cooldown of all skills and resource cost reduction both coming in at a 19% bonus and 15% damage to the enemies. Level 1 Primal Ancient Legendary Bracers. Now moving on to the offhand. We're picking up Echoing Fury. Now you'll notice it doesn't have the legendary bonus on there and that's because it's already on the amulet. So you can't assign the same bonus twice. So that's why it's not appearing on the actual weapon itself. But don't worry guys, it's on the amulet. Now again, we're stacking damage percent damage, increased attack speed. On those offhands, you really have to assign a whole bunch of percent damage and a lot of regular damage too to be able to hit that crazy number, 443,000 for an offhand weapons just absolutely bonkers, man. Craziness. One to maximum damage per paragon level up to 800. So if you're at least 800 paragon levels, man, you're going to be dealing 800 increased damage. Killing an elite pack increases move speed by 30% for 7 seconds. And picking up a health globe increases move speed by 40% for 7 seconds. Cooldown of all skills, 27.1%. Resource cost reduction, 19%. And 15% damage to elite enemies. Level 1, Primal Ancient Legendary Mace. Moving on to the first ring. This is the 1 billion physical skill damage ring. You guys have all seen this so many times, man. So many times it's been, it's been featured here on the channel. 600% damage to all barb skills. It ignores durability loss. Those same two movement speed increases, which is so nice. And yeah, not too much else to write home about for the gem part of this. But you know, it's it's good. It's it's a good ring, man. I I ain't knocking this ring at all. 68.6% for the cooldown of all skills, 65.1 for the resource cost reduction, and a whopping 90% damage to elite enemies, man. Craziness, absolute insanity. Moving on to the second ring. It's again codenamed Tundra. That's what, you know, I thought this was a good name. Let me know if you guys like this name, man. Let me know. 600% damage to all barb skills. Again, stacking damage, percent damage, increased attack speed. Gold health pickup radius is set for 70 yards. It ignores durability loss. The same two movement speed increases. And yeah, pretty much bonuses right here. They're all good though. They're all really, really good. Cooldown of all skills and resource cost reduction, both 52.1%. And I wanna, I'm gonna tell you guys real quick how hard that was for me to hit that number to make them the exact same. Yeah, it took a lot of uh, math, and your boy isn't very good at math, so I'm just happy I was able to get it both at 52.1%. So I'm patting myself on the back. You guys can't see it, but I'm totally doing it. 60% damage to the enemies. Moving on to the boots, we're picking up the illusionary boots again, stacking percent damage, strength, and life per hit. Um, yeah, you can move on 100 through enemies, which is always good on a melee-focused build, or a class, I should say, like the Barbarian. 
Uh, resource cost reduction and skill cooldown, both 19%. Yeah, I, I love when the numbers match up. It just, it's so nice, man. It's, it's, it's like, it's perfect. Okay, so we're over 7,000 strength with the augment and the regular strength on there. Again, percent damage. This is actually the Blackthorns Jousting Mail Pants, codenamed Tundra. And you don't have to worry, man. You're like, Lion, why is there a set piece on the, uh, on a Legacy of Dreams build? That's because there are really any good pants that I could think of. Like legendary pants to put on here, so where you, you know it's picking up the Blackthorns stuff. It is it, good pants, man. Good pants. Finally, the last piece of gear I have to show for you guys is the Chiliax chain. Now this is really good because using Warcry increases move speed for you and all allies affected by 40% for 10 seconds, just to give us some more mobility, you know. And we're also over 7,000 strength again. Yeah, so really good. Bonuses are the same as the pants and the boots. This is a level 1 Primal Ancient Legendary Mighty Belt. For the skills, now this is a speed build somewhat. Um, it's it's a little bit, but you can mess with it however you see fit, but I like this skill setup. So for the X ability, we're picking up Sprint, like always, with the Rune Marathon. For the R2 main damage dealing attack, we're picking up Hammer of the Ancients with the Rune Smash. You can really put any rune you want on there. I think Devil's Anvil does a really good job as well. But from my testing, I think Smash does the job just fine. Moving on to the Square ability and the Tactics skill tree. We're picking up Warcry with the Rune Charge, but again, you can pick any rune you want. It really doesn't matter. Warcry is just such, such, a, good, such a good skill, man. Moving on to the Rage skill tree now. We're picking up for the Triangle ability, Call of the Ancients with the Rune the Council Rises. For the Circle ability, again in that Rage skill tree, we're picking up Wrath of the Berserker with the Rune Insanity. And finally, for that Mobility skill and the Might skill tree, we're picking up Furious Charge with the Rune Cold Rush. Passive number one is Pound of Flesh. Passive number two, Earthen Might. Passive number three, Unforgiving. And passive number four, Inspiring Presence. Now remember, you already have Rampage built on your amulet, so you don't have to assign that one. For cube powers, we're picking up Blade of Tribes the Nemesis Bracers, and the Flavor of Time. Quickly touching on Paragon, you guys know all of this by now. I, I don't even have to give the rundown, but I'm going to anyways. Everything in the Vitality. For the Offensive Skill Tree, um, there really isn't much that needs to be worked. I would just say cooldown reduction because attack speed and everything else is already good to go. For the Defensive Skill Tree, Armor and Resist All, for sure. And then Life, if you have the, the points, definitely. These three right here. Life Regen, you really don't need it. Uh, utility skill tree, say life per hit and gold pickup radius to see if you can get it to 80 yards. I uh, I don't know though. I don't really assign paragon points all that much. Touching on the final numbers real quick, and then we'll wrap it all up with some gameplay. So we're over one trillion damage again. The exact number is one trillion four hundred and sixty-five billion eight hundred million nine hundred eighty-two thousand five hundred twenty-eight. Holy shnikes, that's such a big number, man. 101,000 for the strength, but 153,000 for the armor, which is just awesome, man. It's just so great to see those big numbers. 390% to bonus damage to elites. Moving on down, the attack speed increase is actually showing a value of 40%. What we have we done? Critical hit chance and critical hit damage both capped at their respective values. Moving on down to cooldown reduction. Guys, say it with me. 99.27%. Oh, you know, as long as it's over 99%, I'm, I'm really good. I tried to get it to 100 for a really long time. I did it with one build a really long time ago, but now I just hit 99, and that's okay with me, you know? You know, you can strive to be perfect, but sometimes it takes being unperfect to get things perfect. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it, it does to me. 97.77% for damage reduction. Moving on down to the resistances. Need a little bit of work, but they're at 87%, so not bad. Moving on down into the life stuff, health life bonus 204%, life per kill 17,000, life per hit is just a whopping huge number 479,000. Going on down into the fury stuff, cost reduction 98.52%, movement speed don't worry, it's at 25%, but because we just used Warcry, it's showing a higher value. And finally, Bonus experience for kill 8,000 from the Gem of Ease. So with all of that gone over, I told you guys about the about the skills. We went over the gear. We touched on Paragon, and we showed the final 
first. Now it's time to wrap everything up with some gameplay. This is always my favorite part. Showcase the pure power of these builds with no Paragon distribution and just the gear by itself. So this is a really... Need more time. You basically just go around and you just smash things with your gigantic hammer. And who doesn't like smashing things with gigantic hammers? I mean, I, I find it quite fun. I mean, I love this build. So yeah, how you want to rock this is you literally just go around and smash things with your giant hammer. Now, you can use your sprint ability, your war cry, to give you a good movement speed increase. Now, you want to make sure your wrath of the and Call of the Ancients are both active at the same time because that's going to give you increased damage. Now, it's not like we need the increased damage, so it's not going to make or break your run if you forget to, you know, keep them both up, but it, it is advised to try to keep them active at all times. Other than that, though, you're really just Furious Charge to, to uh, position yourself. You can even, like, Furious Charge into a big mob of enemies and then go ahead and finish them off with your hammer. I find that does a very, very good job. For clear speeds no on this build, a um, little slow. I mean, they're right around, I would say, two to two and a half minutes on the 100 test runs that I've done with this build. So it's pretty consistent. We like consistency. So if you're looking for a fun, different barbarian build to play, then definitely check out the Legacy of Dreams. Don't sleep on this build. It can be very fun and kind of breaks out that normal mold that I have when I play the Barbarian, which is just whirlwinding everything to death. I usually will only play the um, the whirlwind set, you know what I mean? It's my, it's my favorite one, but I often find myself, you know, wanting a little bit of a change, and that's when I played this set right here, man. The Legacy of Dreams. It's fun. I like smashing the shit out of stuff with my jacket the camera so um let me know if you guys have any feedback for me on any of the builds showcased on this channel a great way to give me feedback is on the discord channel now we have a whole diablo chat set up there for talking all things diablo so if you guys have any feedback or you know you just want to get in touch with me that's definitely the best way and once again if you're looking for any of the gear shown in this video it's been given away for absolutely free just hit that link in the description Sign up for Discord if you're not a member, and just put in a request. It's easy as that. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you made it till the end, you're an absolute legend, and I really appreciate your support. I hope to catch you all in a future video coming out soon. But one more thing before I go, I just ask you, if you enjoy the content style of these videos, and you're not currently a subscriber, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button, as that is the best way you can show your support towards me and this community. So finally, again, thank you all for watching. I hope to catch you all in a future video coming out soon. Stay safe, stay happy, and last but not least, stay gaming, my friends. Peace.